I was born right here in this town, Fridley, Minnesota, in 1936. And for 40 years, I've lived my entire life here. Fridley, when I was born, was a small rural township that bordered Minneapolis and had a population of about 500. And during the years that I lived here, I was fortunate to gain some really valuable lessons and wisdom that have served me well for the four decades of my life that followed. And in the hopes that some of you might find this useful, I will share them with you now. Uh, the first of three lessons that I learned was you can live in a place or you can become part of a place. Now this valuable morsel of wisdom was given me by my father, Art Christensen. My dad was born in Fridley in 1902 and lived his entire life here. And he had one major vision for Fridley, which was to take this small rural community and help it grow into a city that could provide all the basic goods and services for its citizens locally. Now to achieve this, he undertook two major initiatives. The first initiative was to acquire two blocks of land at the corner of University of Mississippi Street, right in the heart of Fridley. And then he went out and recruited businesses from the area to move to Fridley, and that these businesses would rent space in the new and Fridley's first shopping center along University Avenue. This vision gave him a huge opportunity because he started a number of businesses on his own. And these businesses were designed to help accelerate Fridley's growth moving forward. From the time my dad was born until he died, Fridley's population grew from 200 to 29,000. So he was a very successful entrepreneur and Fridley changed. The landscape of Fridley changed from a rural area of sand burners and sand dunes, which is on the left side of that aerial photograph. The right side is Fridley in 1965, where there are housing subdivisions, where there are schools, where there are parks, and where there are businesses. An enormous contrast in the landscape in a mere 10-year period. His second initiative was to help start with others a number of nonprofit organizations in Fridley with the purpose of getting more Fridleyites involved in the betterment of the community over time. This was a huge undertaking to complete these initiatives. My father was not a very wealthy man, but he put all of his heart into making his dream a reality more than money. And he died a happy man. The lesson that he taught me in his life was if you immerse yourself in the community and help it thrive, you will enrich your life as well. And my next major lesson that I learned was you choose your family. My aunt and uncle, Leona and Russell Olson, owned a small grocery store and gas station 
in Blaine, a nearby community. And one day, a Jewish couple and their four-year-old daughter in 1946 stopped by. And they mentioned that the father had been transferred to this area on behalf of his company in New York to do some special work here for six months, and they couldn't find a place to live. The Minnesota Historical Society has recorded that between 1900 and the mid-1950s, the Minneapolis area was the most anti-Semitic area in the United States. So my uncle and aunt referred this Jewish family to my father, knowing that my father never turned down anybody who came to him for help. Now, he was fortunate in that he had just put an addition on our house. That's my little brother, John. <laughs> and he showed, this was for my mother, and he offered that to them to live, plus share the house with us. And when the first thing he did after they moved in was to go and buy them a refrigerator for their kosher food. They were thrilled to be there. Not all our neighbors were thrilled to have them there. But he and my mom never considered that they made a sacrifice taking in this family. In fact, it was quite the opposite. They were quite amazed at what followed and what they gained from this relationship. My sister, who was four years old at the time, now had a four-year-old girl to play with, not two brothers that didn't like to play house with her. <laughs> and my mom had someone to help with the housework, to babysit us as they would babysit, uh, uh, as she would babysit their child and help her in the garden where we all, both families, shared from the produce that was produced there. In addition, we built a small bridge between Judaism and Christianity. And we could go on a vacation, which we did, and leave the house in the care of a family that we could totally trust. This was a win-win for everyone. We chose them to be part of our family, and they chose us to be part of theirs. There was another situation that occurred. My experience as a 10-year-old living in a very unique type of family relationship served me well some years later. In fact, it was 1970 when I got married. Three years later, I was divorced. My wife and I knew that the marriage was over, but we made a personal commitment to each other that our family ties would remain unbroken. We raised our son together. He lived with his mom. I had unlimited visitation privileges. Neither one of us remarried. 42 years have passed, and during that time, the three of us get together to celebrate each of our birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, all the other major holidays. Now, for the past 15 years, my former wife has lived in Door County, 335 miles away. My Prius now has over 240,000 miles on it. <laughs> but I was there for my birthday last month. My wife said to me, former wife said to me, if ever you're going to need long-term care, 
and you're getting up in age, you will move in with me and I will take care of you for the rest of your life. My ex-wife said that. The next major lesson I learned was a catastrophe may be just what you need. 50 years ago, May 6, 1965, three major tornadoes went through Fridley, Minnesota. Two of them with 200 mile an hour winds. I experienced every one of them. The last one under a bus bench on University Avenue because I couldn't get to shelter in time as Sergeant Linus Fritz with the Fridley Police Department had deputized me to control the traffic on University of Mississippi Street by our shopping center because there were power lines down. And he relieved me 12 hours later. And I looked down Mississippi Street and there was a stream of people coming to me traumatized, in pain, some shouting, there was gas in their neighborhood. And the first person I met was carrying a young child on his shoulder, and the boy's arm was almost detached at the shoulder, and he's screaming at me, I need help, I need help, I need first aid. And I was helpless because I had no first aid for him. I directed him and all the others that came to me looking for help over to the fire department where I assumed there would be first aid available, but the tornadoes had also hit the fire department. That was the most traumatic moment I ever had in my life when people were coming to me in great need and suffering and there wasn't a thing I could do to help them. However, it was also a very poignant period of time when Fridley underwent an amazing recovery. The first responders were neighbors helping neighbors, even neighbors they had never met before. For they believed this is our people, and this is our town. And this is them working together to clean up the neighborhoods. Plus, there's, there were 18 nonprofit organizations and service organizations in Fridley at the time, plus seven churches, and they all organized their members to come and clean up all the debris in all of these neighborhoods. This photo shows an area of Rice Creek that was undertook major damage. This was that same area six months later. It was amazing the recovery that took place. The city actually gained through this catastrophe. And it gained because all of these neighborhoods rebuilt and where there were older homes, there are now brand new homes. The businesses and all of the industries rebuilt and they had brand new facilities. And Fridley, over 50 years, had the highest assessed valuation of 21 cities in Anoka County. The wisdom that I gained is when you reach out to help others in need, every single person in that community will have a better life. So these are the three major lessons that I've learned in my life so far. <laughs> Thank you.